Hello, welcome back. It's uh, 5 p.m. I got my pension straight. <coughs> I start to get tired. So tomorrow, Friday, is uh, Thursday, 31 last day of August. Tomorrow, Friday, pay my bills. So I did not uh, spend any money on my credit card, so my payments have dropped a bit. So I have to keep doing that in the next two years. <coughs> but that will be a little hard to do, but I have to do it. Oh, I had something uh, I'd like to read about. But we could read uh, this MiG-17, we could do this. That was my plan to do it. Uh, we can read about jet fighter generations. Let's do that. And jet engine. That's a big one. So... Uh, I don't know, let's make a smaller one, that's too long, this jet, so we'll find out what to do. <coughs> but I was reading about the uh, jet fighters. I will go to my bed and read something to this camcorder is out of power. And I was looking at uh, flying boats. We could read about flying boats too. Let's read uh, this one. Oh, I have to put uh, the speakers up. Flying boat. Short S23C class or Empire Flying Boat A flying boat is a type of fixed winged seaplane with a hull allowing it to land on water. Dot. One, it differs from a float plane in having a fuselage that is purpose designed for flotation. While float planes rely on fuselage mounted floats for buoyancy. Dot. Though a flying boat's fuselage provides buoyancy, it may also utilize underwing floats or wing like hull projections, called sponsons. For additional stability, dot ascending into common use during the First World War, flying boats rapidly grew in both scale and capability during the interwar period, during which time numerous operators found commercial success with the type. Flying boats were some of the largest aircraft of the first half of the 20th century, exceeded in size only by bombers developed during the Second World War. Their advantage lay in a sing water instead of expensive land-based runways, making them the basis for international airlines in the interwar period. They were also commonly used as maritime patrol aircraft and air sea rescue, particularly during times of conflict. Flying boats such as the PBY Catalina and Short Sunderland played key roles in both the Pacific Theater and the Atlantic of the Second World War. The popularity of flying boats gradually tailed off during the Cold War era, partially because of the difficulty in maintaining operations in inclement weather when sea states may easily prevent taking off and landing while land-based aircraft are unaffected and investments in airports during the conflict that ease it introduction of larger, and more, efficient, land-based airliners. 
Despite being largely overshadowed, limited use of the type continued with some operators, such as in the case of the Shin Meiwa US 1 and Martin JRM Mars. In the 21st century, flying boats maintain a few niche uses, such as dropping water in forest fires, air transport around archipelagos, and access to undeveloped areas. Many modern seaplane variants, whether float or flying boat types, are convertible amphibious aircraft where either landing gear or flotation modes may be used to land and take off. History Early float planes The quest for an aircraft that could take off or land from water began with float planes, which are not flying boats. The Frenchman Alphonse P. Nord filed the first patent for a flying machine with a boat hull and retractable landing gear in 1876 but failed to build one. Austrian Wilhelm Kress is credited by some with attempting to build the first successful seaplane Drachenflieger, a float plane, in 1898, although its 230 HP Daimler engines were inadequate for takeoff and it later sank when one of its two floats collapsed. Two, on the 6th of June, 1905, Gabriel Vrazen took off and landed on the River Seine with a towed kite glider on floats. The first of his unpowered flights was 150 yards. Two, he later built a powered float plane in partnership with Louis Blériot, but the machine was unsuccessful. Gabriel Vrazen, a pioneer next to Henry Farman, left. In 1908 other pioneers also attempted to attach floats to aircraft in Britain, Australia, France and the USA. On the 28th of March, 1910, Frenchman Henry Fabre flew the first successful powered float plane, the Nome Omega powered Hydravian, a trimaram float plane. Three, Fabre's first successful takeoff and landing by a powered float plane inspired other aviators and he designed floats for several other flyers. The first hydro aeroplane competition was held in Monaco in March 1912, featuring aircraft using floats from Fabre, Curtis, Tellier and Farman. This led to the first scheduled seaplane passenger services at A. Lesbains using a five seat Sanchez Bissa from the 1st of August 1912. 2. The French Navy ordered its first float plane in 1912. None of these crafts to date were flying boats. In 1911 12, François Den Hort constructed the first flying boat, with a fuselage forming a hull using various designs to give hydrodynamic lift at a cough. Its first successful flight was on the 13th of April 1912. Two, throughout 1910 and 1911 American pioneering aviator Glenn Curtis developed his float plane into the successful Curtis Model D land plane, which used a larger central float and sponsons. Combining floats with wheels, he made the first amphibian flights in February 1911 and was awarded the first Collier Trophy for U.S. flight achievement. From 1912 his experiments resulted in the 1913 Model E and Model F which he called flying boats. Two, in February 1911, the United States Navy took delivery of the Curtis Model E and soon tested landings and takeoffs from ships using the Curtis Model D. In Britain, Captain Edward Wakefield and Oscar Nospelius began to explore the feasibility of flight from water in 1908. They decided to make use of Windermere in the Lake District, England's largest lake, to test the float plane. The latter's first attempts to fly attracted large crowds, though the aircraft failed to take off and required a redesign of the floats incorporating features of Boeing's successful speedboat hulls. Meanwhile, Wakefield ordered a float plane similar to the design of the 1910 Fabra Hydravian. By November 1911, both Nospelius and Wakefield had aircraft capable of flight from water and awaited suitable weather conditions. Nospelius's flight was short-lived as the aircraft crashed into the lake. Wakefield's pilot, however, taking advantage of a light northerly wind, successfully took off and flew at a height of 50 feet to Ferry Nab, 
where he made a wide turn and returned for a perfect landing on the lake surface. Birth of an industry. Curtis NC Flying Boat NC3 skims across the water before takeoff, 1919 in 1913. The Daily Mail newspaper put up a £10,000 prize for the first non-stop aerial crossing of the Atlantic which was soon enhanced by a further sum from the Women's Aerial League of Great Britain. American businessman Rodman Wanamaker became determined that the prize should go to an American aircraft and commissioned the Curtis Aeroplane and Motor Company to design and build an aircraft capable of making the flight. Curtis' development of the Flying Fish Flying Boat in 1913 brought him into contact with John Cyril Porte, a retired Royal Navy Lieutenant aircraft designer and test pilot who was to become an influential British aviation pioneer. Recognizing that many of the early accidents were attributable to a understanding of handling while in contact with the water, the pair's efforts went into developing practical hull designs to make the transatlantic crossing possible. For, at the same time the British boat building firm J. Samuel White of Cows on the Isle of Wight set up an aircraft division and produced a flying boat in the United Kingdom. This was displayed at the London Air Show at Olympia in 1913.5. In that same year, a collaboration between the S.E. Saunders Boatyard of East Cows and the Soap with Aviation Company produced the Bat Boat, an aircraft with a consuter laminated hull that could operate from land or on water, which today we call an amphibious aircraft.5. The Bat Boat completed several landings on sea and on land and was duly awarded the Mortimer Singer Prize. Five. It was the first all British aeroplane capable of making six return flights over five miles within five hours. In the US, Wanamaker's commission built on Glenn Curtis' previous development and experience with the Model F 6 for the US Navy, which rapidly resulted in the America designed under Porte's supervision following his study and rearrangement of the flight plan. The aircraft was a conventional biplane design with two bay, unstaggered wings of unequal span with two pusher inline engines mounted side by side above F fuselage in the interplane gap. Wingtip pontoons were attached directly below the lower wings near the tips. The design later developed into the Model H, resembled Curtis' earlier flying boats, but was built considerably larger so it could carry enough fuel to cover 1,100 m, 1,800 km. The three crew members were accommodated in a fully enclosed cabin. Trials of the America began on the 23rd of June, 1914 with Porte also as chief test pilot. Testing soon revealed serious shortcomings in the design. It was underpowered, so the engines were replaced with more powerful engines mounted in a tractor configuration. There was also a tendency for the nose of the aircraft to try to submerge as engine power increased while taxiing on water. This phenomenon had not been encountered before, since Curtis' earlier designs had not used such powerful engines nor large fuel forward slash cargo loads and so were relatively more buoyant. In order to counteract this effect, Curtis fitted fins to the sides of the boat to add hydrodynamic lift, but soon replaced these with sponsons, a type of underwater pontoon mounted in pairs on either side of a hull. These sponsons, or their engineering equivalents, and the flared notched hull would remain a prominent feature of flying boat hull design in the decades to follow. With the problem resolved, preparations for the crossing resumed. While the craft was found to handle heavily on takeoff, and required rather longer takeoff distances than expected, the full moon on the 5th of August, 1914 was selected for the transatlantic flight. Porte was to pilot the America with George Hallett as co-pilot and mechanic. First World War. Curtis and Porte's plans were interrupted by the outbreak of the First World War. Porte sailed for England on the 4th of August, 1914, and rejoined the Navy as a member of the Royal Naval Air Service. Appointed squadron commander of Royal Navy Air Station Hendon. 
he soon convinced the Admiralty of the potential of flying boats and was put in charge of the Naval Air Station at Felixstowe in 1915. Porter persuaded the Admiralty to commandeer, and later, purchase, the America and a sister craft from Curtis. This was followed by an order for 12 more similar aircraft, one Model H2 and the remaining as Model H4S. Four examples of the latter were assembled in the UK by Saunders. All of these were similar to their design of the America and, indeed, were all referred to as Americas in Royal Navy service. The engines, however, were changed from the underpowered 160 HP Curtis engines to 250 HP Rolls-Royce Falcon engines. The initial batch was followed by an order for 50 more, totaling 64 Americas overall during the year. Dot, four. Porte also acquired permission to modify and experiment with the Curtis aircraft. The Curtis H4S were soon found to have a number of problems. They were underpowered, their hulls were too weak for sustained operations and they had poor handling characteristics when afloat or taking a dot, seven, eight, one flying boat pilot, Major Theodore Douglas Hallam, wrote that they were comic machines weighing well under two tons, with two comic engines giving, when they functioned, 180 horsepower, and comic control, being nose heavy with engines on and tail heavy in a glide. 9. Felix Stowe F.20, the first production flying boat, and the basis for future development. At Felix Stowe, Porte made advances in flying boat design and developed a practical hull design with the distinctive Felix Stowe notch. 10. Porte's first design to be implemented in Felix Stowe Ways Felix Stowe Porte Baby, a large, three engined biplane flying boat powered by one central pusher and two outboard tractor Rolls-Royce Eagle engines. Porte modified an H4 with a new hull whose improved hydrodynamic qualities made taxiing, takeoff and landing much more practical, and called it the Felix Stowe F.1. Porte's innovation of the Felix Stowe notch enabled the craft to become suction from the water more quickly and break free for flight much more easily. This made operating the craft far safer and more reliable, although similar devices had been in use in France since 1911. The notch brakes thruff would soon after evolve into a step, with the rear section of the lower hull sharply recessed above the forward lower hull section, and that characteristic became a feature of both flying boat hulls and float planar floats. The resulting aircraft would be large enough to carry sufficient fuel to fly long distances and could berth alongside ships to take on more fuel. Porte then designed a similar hull for the larger Curtis H-12 flying boat which, while larger and more capable than the H-4S, shared failings of a weak hull and poor water handling. The combination of the new port designed hull, this time fitted with two steps, with the wings of the H-12 and a new tail, and power by two Rolls-Royce Eagle engines, was named the Felix Stowe F.2 and first flew in July 1916, 11, proving greatly superior to the Curtis on which it was based. It was used as the basis for all future designs. 12, itented production as the Felix Stowe F.2, being used as a patrol aircraft with about 100 being completed by the end of World War I. Another 70 were built, and these were followed by two F.2C, which were built at Felix Stowe. The Felix Stowe F.5, designed by Lieutenant Commander John Cyril Porte at the Seaplane Experimental Station, Felix Stowe. The Felix Stowe F.5 was intended to combine the good qualities of F.2 and F.3 with the prototype first flying in May 1918. The prototype showed superior qualities to its predecessors but, to ease production, the production version was modified to make extensive use of components from the F.3, which resulted in lower performance than the F.2 or F.3. The Felix Stowe flying boats were extensively employed by the Royal Navy for coastal patrols including searching for German U-boats. 
In 1918 they were towed on lighters towards the northern German ports to extend their range. On the 4th of June, 1918 this resulted in three F.2s engaging with ten German seaplanes, shooting down two confirmed and four probables at no loss. Four. As a result of this action, British flying boats...